welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how to use an S3 bucket as a Terraform backend. I will also explain what is a backend in Terraform, what is the advantage of using S3 bucket for that, and what is possible a, a con. And also I will mention what services and, and other requirements you need to use uh, S3 as a, as a backend. But first, if this is your first time in the channel, I'll invite you to take a look at the playlist where you will find a lot of free tutorials for Jenkins, Docker, AWS, Terraform, Ansible, SonarCube, Security, Bash, and okay. more. For, for this, I'm going to need uh, to create a new S3 bucket. I'm going to go to the AWS console. I'm going to put here a name for the backend. and random number I'm going to copy this value I will deploy this uh, S3 token in US West 1 I will let this configuration as default I will block all the public access I'm enabling the versioning for backup and also as a best practice I need to add a tax okay Okay, I added some tags. Also, the default encryption, I will let the default, which is S3 Manage Keys, is it will be enabled by default. Okay, I'm going to create the bucket. And as you can see, the bucket is empty as expected. I'm going to go back and then I'm going to go to the Terraform template. I have this backend.tf where I'm specifying the, the backend in this case S3. But what is a backend in Terraform? A backend is a way to store our TF state file. It can be local, it can be S3, it can be, it can be in another services as well. But also what is a TF state? Let's take a look on one TF state that I have here. It will be almost empty but the purpose of this file is to store the current state of our uh, cloud infrastructure. In this case here in the resource section, it will list all the resources that I'm going to deploy in the in the cloud. It can be a near RDS in this case, an EC2, S3 buckets, etc. All the resources. And and specific um, and more important, all the configurations that those resources has because the purpose of the TF state is to represent the current state of the infrastructure or the ideal state of the infrastructure. What happens if a user goes to the console and change any parameter in an EC2, for example, then Terraform will try to validate the TF state and it will say, oh, this is different, it's not, it's not correct, you need to do something. So that's the purpose of this. So going back to the backend, I'm going to specify here the bucket name and also the key. What is a key? In this case is a path to the TF state. So I'm going to create a new new path in the bucket called backend and then TF state. And the region is um, US West 1. Okay, US West 1. That's it. Okay. Let's try to do a Terraform init and it will fail because my backend changed. I do I did some tests and now the backend is different and for fixing this I need to use Terraform init reconfigure. Okay, it will reinitialize the backend, it will use the S3 bucket as it says here, is using some um, plugins for AWS and the Terraform was, sorry, the, the backend was successfully initialized. Then I can do a Terraform plan to see what I'm going to deploy. It will be an RDS. As you can see, one a resource will be added. Nothing to be changed, nothing to be destroyed. And now I'm going to apply the changes with the auto approve flag. Okay, it will take some time, but um, I'm going to tell you what you need for from AWS. 
in this case as you saw I created an S3 bucket manually you can also use Terraform for that but also it will be used DynamoDB for creating a log file in order to work with people around the, the world or in, in your local uh, country or your local office but uh, when multiple persons try to access to the same infra and editing Terraform code you can uh, find some some crashes there some clashes so you need to to have a remote state in this case in S3 bucket uh, to to avoid these these problems when you are working uh, with um, several people at, in the same code so I'm going to pause the video and I will resume when this is completed okay the command just completed and as you can see the RDS was created here one resource was added I can go to the AWS console and confirm inside the bucket what happened with the TF state let me refresh this and now we have this new path Terraform backend and TF state if I click this and then click open you will see a lot of details in the resource section that previously was empty in my local now it has a lot of configurations from the from the RDS and this is the purpose of the TF state because this is the desired, um, desired state of my cloud resources and now is uh, stored in a remote backend which is an S3 bucket let's confirm that the RDS was created let me click on this ok it's opening go to the databases here and now I can see that my RDS is here so the Terraform code was executed as expected and now everything is stored in the S3 bucket so we can uh, manage the multiple editions and locking the changes and most important we can ensure our infrastructure is secure and in the desired state ok this is all for this video I hope you enjoy it please subscribe to the channel and let me know your comments thanks